Good morning to both of you. Julie, I'll start off with you, and I want to start off with what is going on right now around the world, because as the Fed is, is aggressively battling inflation here, sending the dollar higher, obviously the, the flip side to this is we're seeing huge moves in developed uh, market currencies that are like emerging market moves. Uh, we've got right. the yuan and the yen uh, extremely weak. We've got the U.K., the pound at record lows. And I'm wondering how you view the fallout, the impact, the ripple effect around the world. Right. I mean, this was always my concern about the idea that the U.S. could engineer a short and shallow recession to cool off inflation. The U.S. has the strongest economy in the world. If the U.S. goes into recession, uh, that means the entire global economy is in recession. And I think that's we're, we're at a tipping point now. And, and the faster the Fed goes, uh, the more pressure there is on the dollar through the dollar on other currencies. Uh, and it's really been quite extraordinary from the yen, which, of course, that's a special situation, the Bank of Japan, the loan holdout uh, with dovish policy. But and, you know, of course, the U.K. has its own special situations. But, you know, everything is a situation. And the bottom line is the global economy is in uh, a much more precarious state than the U.S. economy. Uh, the drivers of this global inflation are incredibly complex, uh, everything from demand to multiple supply shocks. Uh, and so that the monetary hammer coming down so hard is, is really straining things. Um, and, and it's been an extraordinary couple of weeks. Hey, Greg, what's your view on how what is an unfolding around the world complicates the Fed's battle and its uh, really aggressive stance that it's been taking? Well, the clear message from uh, Fed Chair Jay Powell is that they're basically a one-mandate central bank right now. They're not worried about the full employment side of their mandate. They're worried, first and foremost, about inflation. And that means that other things, including the health of the rest of the world, are unfortunately rather low on their list of priorities. I mean, what you're seeing in the markets is really the logical result of what the Fed told us last week, is that they are quite prepared to cause a recession to get inflation back to their 2 percent target. Their forecast now is for an unemployment rate of around 4.5 percent next year. That type of increase we've only seen during a recession. And the other kind of grim um, thing to think about is that the things they're looking at for success, like employment and then secondly inflation, are, as we know, lagging indicators. They could have tightened quite a lot and done a lot of damage to the financial markets before they actually get the signal that they are uh, that they're looking for, that things are actually working. So we could be in for quite a few months of uh, very difficult times. And Julia, just to follow up on that, in terms of the full effect, we won't see the full effect for quite some time of the Fed's aggressive stance. And so I'm, I'm curious to know whether or not there is uh, more force behind the impact eventually, given what is going on around the world and, and the course of the other central banks as well. Does it make That's the damage worse? Yeah, that's certainly the risk. While you want to cool off demand uh, to ease the, that side of the inflation pressures, um, what you could end in uh, up with is some very nonlinear dynamics and some, you know, some need to address financial crises. Uh, and that certainly would be undesirable. Um, I think, you know, the Fed has scope. At this point, you know, we know, as Greg pointed out, uh, inflation is the ultimate lagging indicator. Even employment is a bit lagging. Demand is already moderating. Commodity prices are down. Um, there is scope for the Fed to shift to a 50 basis point pace. Nobody's saying take your foot off the, the, uh, the brake or, uh, or, or pivot. But they could, in the interest of global stability, just downshift to 50 basis points that would be you're not no longer the fastest car on the road. Uh, that would take some pressure off the dollar and could just allow for more of an adjustment uh, that maybe comes with less of the kind of crisis fallout that we're, we're looking at now. Um, they would probably need some data to help lean on some domestic data, some slowing in, in hiring, some easing in inflation pressures. But again, headline inflation is easing. Inflation expectations certainly have responded to the Fed's aggression. Uh, so, you know, there is scope for them to kind of downshift in the interest of global stability uh, to a steadier pace to maybe allow for some of these adjustments and, and, and not, uh, you know, crash the car into the wall.